Welcome back to the game show that's sweeping the nation. So you think you know basketball. Now, here's your host, YouTube basketball rules expert, Greg Austin. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the game show, So You Think You Know Basketball. It's a show where contestants get to display their knowledge of National Federation of High School basketball rules. Here's a quick review of how the show works. We will present you with a game situation in both video and audio format. You will have five seconds in which to make your ruling. You will make your ruling using one of six choices. The choices will be the same for each game situation you're presented with. Each scenario is worth one point, with the exception of one question, which is worth two points, the double dandy. You can download a score sheet from the website abetterofficial.com. There'll be a link above and a link in the show notes. If you want to put the video on pause, download your score sheet, and get ready to go. You can always just use a plain piece of paper as a score sheet or anything that you could write on. Even a coffee cup. Alrighty then, let's get started with the quiz. Today we are discussing technical foul scenarios. Remember that when a play scenario is presented, the correct answer is never technical foul. The correct answer is administrative technical, team technical, substitute technical, player technical, or bench technical. Our sixth answer today is no technical foul. So for each question, those are your choices. Administrative, team, substitute, player, bench, or no technical foul. So those are your choices for each game situation. Are you ready? Let's get started with the quiz. Question one. At halftime, as the teams, coaches, and officials are making their way through a hallway to the dressing room, A23 makes an unsportsmanlike remark to one of the officials. Bench technical foul. Question two. A1 has the ball out of bounds for a throw in. A1 completes the throw in to A2 and then purposefully delays his return by taking four or five steps along the end line prior to coming in bounds behind a screen set by A3 and A4. A1 gets a return pass from A2 and takes an unchallenged try for goal. Player technical foul. Question three. Following a charged timeout, Team B is still with their coach on the sideline when the official sounds the whistle to indicate play will resume. Four players of Team B return to the court just in time to play defense as A1 attempts an unsuccessful three-pointer. B1 rebounds and throws a long pass to B5 who enters the court just in time to catch the pass. Team Technical Foul Question 4 During the game, the officials notice that Team A has an individual on the bench using an iPad to keep stats for the game. No technical foul. 
Question five. The table notifies the official that A3 has committed his fifth foul. The official notifies Team A coach that A3 is disqualified. A3 makes an unsportsmanlike comment to the official on their way to the bench. Bench technical foul. Question six. A1 tries for a goal and B1 jumps and attempts to block the shot. In doing so, B1's hand strikes the backboard causing it to move. The ball rolls off of the still moving basket. No technical foul. Question seven. The ruling official has reported the foul and the lead official has given directions to players along the lane. The official is ready to put the ball at the free thrower A1's disposal, but A1 is at the sideline talking to the coach. Player technical foul. Question eight. A5 reports to the table as a substitute and sits on the floor. During play, there's a highly competitive loose ball situation between A12 and B55. After the whistle blows, substitute A5 steps onto the floor and shoves B-55. Bench technical foul. Question nine. Team A is warned in the first half when A-1 reaches through the throw-in boundary plane. Early in the fourth period, A1 does the same thing. Team technical foul. Question 10. During a timeout in the second period of play, the Team B coach requests the scorer change a team member's number in the scorebook. Team B has already received an administrative technical for failing to submit their roster prior to 10 minutes before the game. Administrative technical foul. Question 11. Thrower A1 is out of bounds and extends the ball through the plane of the boundary line. B2 slaps the ball out of the hands of A1, recovers, and scores. No technical foul. Question 12. With two minutes remaining in the second period, B1 commits her third foul against airborne shooter A1. The try is unsuccessful. Team B's coach sends B6 to the scorer's table to replace B1 after A1's first free throw. B1, angry about the official's ruling and knowing she will be replaced, goes and sits on the end of Team B's bench as the foul is reported. Player 
player technical foul. Question 13. The third period ends. As the teams are heading to their respective benches, A1 verbally taunts B1. Bench technical foul. Question 14. A1 requests and is granted a timeout late in the fourth period. Team A had already used its three 60-second timeouts and its two 30-second timeouts. Team Technical Foul Question 15 Substitute A1 enters the court without reporting to the scorer. The infraction is discovered after the ball becomes live. No technical foul. Question 16. After a foul is called against A1, as the official moves to the reporting area, Team A's head coach demonstrably waves his arms in disagreement with the call. Bench technical foul. Question 17. With four minutes remaining in the first period, substitute A35 reports to the table and at the next dead ball is beckoned in by the officials. After a minute of playing time has passed, A35 commits a foul. After the calling official reports the foul, the scorer informs the official that A35 was not on the submitted roster and is not listed in the book. Administrative Technical Foul Question 18 While the ball is in control of Team A and the clock is running, and without the officials noticing, substitute B6 enters the game and is the team's sixth player on the court. At the next dead ball, B6 returns to the bench, after which Team A commits a violation. The scorer informs the official that Team B had six players on the court. No technical foul. Question 19. The ball is out of bounds on the end line. As the lead official hands the ball to the thrower for the resulting throw in, substitute B1 runs, taps the table and runs onto the floor. Substitute technical foul. Question 20. As the third period is about to begin, Team A has not returned to the floor. The officials allow one minute to pass and the team is still not on the court. Team technical foul. That will wrap up today's episode of So You Think You Know Basketball. Did you find it challenging? 
Make sure to put your score in the comments below and any questions or follow-up that you have. Also remember that we will have a post game after this section of the show in which all answers will be discussed. This is Greg Austin signing off and thanks for watching. Welcome everyone, it's the Post Game Show. We're gonna discuss the questions on the quiz, discuss why each answer is what it is, but also remember important points along the way that we need to remember when we're adjudicating game situations that involve technical fouls or possible technical fouls. So let's get started, let's jump right in. Question number one. Question one. All right, so we have an unsportsmanlike remark at halftime. Remember that during intermissions between periods, all team members are considered bench personnel. So the first period ends, before the second period begins, all team members are bench personnel. At halftime between the second and third periods, all team members are bench personnel. If there's any interaction that is unsportsmanlike by any team member or any other bench personnel with the officials or with opponents or with spectators or any unsporting action, they are considered bench personnel, which means that is a bench technical foul. It is on the individual and it will be an indirect assessed to the head coach as well. For all bench technicals, that's what we have. All right, let's move on. Question two. Okay, pretty straightforward. A1 has purposefully delayed their return to the court after being legally out of bounds. By rule, this is a player technical foul. Straight up, straight from the rule. Question three. All right, this is a good one. Following a charge timeout, team fails to return to the court. The official properly uses resumption of play to make the ball live. Four of the team members rush back onto the court. Ultimately, one of the te team members has the ball and throws a full length pass to the fifth team member who emerges from the bench, comes onto the court, and catches the ball, right? This is a technical foul by rule, but we really need to know what kind of technical foul this is. This is a team technical foul for all of the players not returning to the court at approximately the same time following a timeout. If we look at the rule, Article 5, fail to have all players return to the court at approximately the same time following a timeout or intermission. Question four. Pretty straightforward question. Electronic devices are illegal by rule for the purpose of tracking information such as scoring or statistics, etc. iPad on the bench, legal for those purposes. Question five. This is a great question that brings up a couple of really important points. First of all, when is a player disqualified from the game? The player is disqualified from the game when the official informs the head coach. Coach, player has five fouls. At that moment, that player is disqualified with that simple action. That's why it's important that we always inform properly. So the player is now disqualified. That makes them no longer a player, but in their status of, of where they were on the court to go sit on the team bench, they are now bench personnel by rule. 
Any action by bench personnel that is unsporting is assessed a bench technical foul to that individual. And if that individual is not the head coach, which they're not here, then there's also an indirect f- technical foul on the head coach. And that's what we have here. Bench technical on A3, indirect technical on head coach. Question six. So we have a defensive player jumping, attempting to block a shot, slapping the backboard, causing it to move. The ball ends up on the ring with the ring moving and the backboard moving and rolls off. In high school basketball, this is a legal play. As long as the action by the defender was a legitimate attempt to block the shot, this is a legal play. There is no technical foul. There is no foul on this play. Question seven. On this play, we have a free throw. We have a player who is fouled and will have free throws as a result. The official calling official has reported to the table. The non-calling official or the lead in this case is ready to administer the free throws and yet no player. The player is not in the free throw semicircle ready to go. They are over on the sideline talking to their coach. This is a player technical foul by rule. Let's also remember that we're not discussing how to handle these situations in your game. We're not talking about preventative officiating and what have you. We're just talking about the rules. By rule, this is a player technical foul. It's not on the coach for distracting the player. It's not on the team. It's on the player. Question eight. All right, this may be a contentious play. There may be disagreement about the ruling here but I think we have solid footing. So we have a substitute who reports to the table and sits on the floor waiting to be beckoned in. During play, there's a highly competitive loose ball, maybe tempers flare, uh, a lot of tension between those players. This player, this substitute, steps onto the floor and pushes the opponent. What do we have? We have a bench technical foul. We have unsporting action by a player who is a substitute. Let's remember the substitute technical foul rule refers specifically to failing to report to the scorer or entering the court without being beckoned. Now, while the player did enter the court, that's not the key component here. The key component here is the unsporting action. So we have unsporting action by bench personnel. Let's remember that a head coach, if we look at the bench personnel uh, technical foul rule, the head coach is responsible for his or her own conduct and behavior, as well as substitutes, disqualified team members, and all other bench personnel. Our feeling is that this player is would receive a substitute technical if they violated the very narrow restrictions. But if they commit an unsporting act, it is a bench technical foul assessed to the individual. And since it's a bench technical foul, the head coach will also receive an indirect. Question nine. So we have a player who in the first half reaches through the boundary plane on a throw-in and the team receives a delay of game warning as a result. And in the second half, the same player does the same offense and we have a tactical foul assessed. So remember, this is a team tactical foul for violating the plane after this team had already received any of the delay of game warnings, huddling during a free throw, water on the floor after a timeout, etc. If any of those had happened first, and then we have a player reach through the boundary plane, 
it would also be a team tactical foul. But this is a team tactical foul, even though it's the same individual. It's not on the individual, it's on the team. Question 10. All right, a great question. During a timeout, a team a head coach requests that a player be added to the book. The trick here is that the team has already received an administrative tactical foul for failure to submit their roster 10 minutes prior to the game. But let's remember, these are two separate portions of the rule. There is an administrative tactical foul for the first portion, failure to submit, but then there's also a second administrative tactical foul for adding or making a change to a player's number in the book. Okay, that second clause, adding a player, right, covers multiple occurrences happening, but is separate from the first part of the rule. So it's important to remember that. So in this instance, a an administrative technical foul would be assessed and the opponent would have two free throws and the ball for division line throw in opposite the table. Question 11. Now we have a thrower out of bounds, extends the ball through the boundary plane over the court. The defender slaps the ball, legal play. Remember, for a defender, it is illegal to penetrate the boundary plane and contact the ball. But if the ball comes to them, it is fair game, legal play, no foul. Question 12. All right, on this play, we have an upset player on the court who's forced to stay on the court during a free, th a free throw so that we can get to the period where they can be correctly substituted for. And this player becomes frustrated and steps off the court and goes on the bench. This is a player technical foul by rule. Leave the playing court for an unauthorized reason to demonstrate resentment, disgust, or intimidation. Player technical by rule. Now, is this a bench technical right? What was the status of the individual who went and sat on the bench? Let's just remember their status. Status is critical in all components of officiating basketball. But the player's status, had they been substituted for? No, not yet. If they had been substituted for, when that substitute was brought on, they would become bench personnel. But that didn't occur in this, in this situation. So they were a player who committed a violation of the player tactical foul rule is a player tactical foul, two free throws, and the ball for division line throw-in. Question 13. End of the third period, A1 taunts B1. What's the status of A1 during an intermission between periods, pretty straightforward. They are bench personnel by rule. This is a bench technical foul on A1 and an indirect foul as a result on the head coach for Team A. Question 14. A1 requests and is granted a timeout. The problem is they don't have any timeouts remaining. So they have used an excessive timeout. A1 has requested and used an, an, an excessive timeout. The penalty for an excessive timeout is team tactical, whether the head coach called it, A1 called it, or any of the other four players in the game. It is a team tactical for an excessive timeout. Question 15. Substitute enters the court without reporting, but the infraction is not discovered until after the ball becomes live. When does a player who substituted illegally 
become a legal player when the ball becomes live. So in this instance, even though there was an infraction of the rules, our opportunity to penalize has passed. With each violation of tactical foul rules, there is a window of time in which we can legally assess a tactical. This window on this instance has passed. There is no tactical foul on this play. Question 16. Official makes a call on A1, goes to report, and the, the head coach is demonstrably waving his hands in disgust at the call. This is a bench technical foul on the head coach by rule. This is not permitted by rule. The official in this instance would have the opportunity to assess a warning, but a warning is not necessary in order to, to assess a tactical foul. Demonstrably displaying disgust at a call, bench tactical foul on the head coach. Question 17. We've got a player who reports legally, who's beckoned in legally, plays, commits a foul. The official scorer goes to enter the foul onto that player's line in the scorebook, realizes they are not in the scorebook. We will need to add that player to the scorebook, and in doing so, we, have, we will assess an administrative technical foul to Team A. Question 18. All right, tricky. So we have a sixth player enter the court illegally since they were not beckoned in. The ball becomes live. That become, player becomes a legal player, but this team has six players participating. That's obviously against the rules, but the ball becomes dead. That player leaves the court. And now the scorer informs that, hey, wait a minute, they had six on the court. Again, remember, we have a window of opportunity with tactical fouls with six players participating or more than five participating. Our opportunity to assess is when discovered while occurring. We did not discover while it was occurring. We have no opportunity to assess a tactical foul here. Correct answer, no technical foul. Question 19. We have a live ball scenario. The official is handing the ball to the thrower for the throw-in. Player runs, taps the table. We can call that reporting to the scorer, but then runs onto the floor. That is a substitute technical by rule. They were not beckoned into the game. Substitute technical by rule on that team member. Question 20. Okay, after halftime, one team is on the floor, one team is not. The, the clock expires. Team A is not on the court. The officials properly let one minute expire. They could do that with a handheld uh, stopwatch device, you know, as if the table was measuring a 60 second timeout. Or they could have them put a minute on the clock and run it down. Both are options. But one minute has passed. The team is still not here. That is a team technical foul by rule. Officials handled it properly, waited for the minute to expire, and then you would accept and then they would assess a team technical foul. Okay, there we have it. That's our rundown of the questions. If you have any comments or questions, put them down below. Make sure you put your score down below. If you find content like this valuable, if you're an official who wants to get better, our channel is the right channel for you.
hit subscribe below and the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. I'll do a couple things here. I will put a link above to the playlist for the entire series on technical fouls. If you think you need to go back, review, watch them again, the entire series link is above. Also, if you want to help support the show, you can always buy us a coffee. At abetterofficial.com slash coffee, there is a link above. There you have it. Additional video content, as always, is available here. We'll see you in the next video.